Well, Lance is nearly ready for a blue slip, but to do that, we need to get the tray back on, and I've got a really cool idea for some custom sides and a few little custom touches to really give it that rat rod look. Let's get into it. Righto, time to go. It's not flash, we pushed on too far, and now the pub's shut. <laughs> it's 10 past 10. <laughs> But at this point, you really question your life choices. It's most definitely going to catch on fire. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Don't tell people that we know <laughs> what we don't know what we're doing. Don't forget, when installing new suspension like this, make sure you lube your pin. Actually sounded like I knew what I was talking about for once. It's rare. Oh! I'm sure that's how panel beaters do it. Well, I hope not, but that's how I did it. Wait. Here you go, love. You burn it. Oh, thank you. That's not good, is it? I don't think so. Mm. Kill my grinder. Go ah. back. Okay, now all the wire wheeling's done, we're gonna go and apply a rust converter. This is like a light acid. This time, the uh, surface should go black once this is done. Ready for paint tomorrow. Right, so we got the guards back off Lance, take them out the back, finish cleaning up underneath where I welded the other bits of guard back to them. Um, it's going to be a bit hard to actually prep these things and know where to paint and where not to paint. We really don't know how much time I want to spend on it. Try and get all this flaky stuff off under here so I can get anything to stick to it. Uh, I'll do these bolts up properly, we'll get the grinder out and see how much of a big job it is going to be. I'm just a bit over wire wheeling for one day, that's what's happening here. So I did rust convert the top side of the guard a little bit as well. We just did where it's inside the engine bay. From this line across is the outside of the guard. And I'll let it rust off and um, go with the patinaed look that the rest of the car has. Once it is all rusted off to sort of the same amount, um, we'll, we'll smooth it back a bit and just protect it. I don't, I don't want it to rust away. I just want it to have a patinaed rusty look. So we'll continue with that. Uh, I've just got a bit of a design for the bottom of the cab here to match the guards. I'm going to run a bit of that rusty steel strap just along the bottom edge of the doors to um, help stiffen it up and cover the holes where the old side steps used to go. I think that'll look mint. Well, I think it will anyway. Meg's is still on the fence about the, um, the band-aids she calls on the guards. I think it kind of looks good. It suits him. Righto, another new day. I've gone out and got some etch primer and some more bully liner. I'm uh, just using a bit of SCA etch primer some cheap rollers and some throwaway roller trays because I'm sure this stuff will just destroy everything we touch. So we'll get in and start priming the underside of the guards and the deck of the tray. Okay, so we might start with the underside of the guards. The tray's a little bit damp from the dew last night. Uh, we'll give it a blow off. I'll probably wipe it down with um, some thinners or some prep soles, something like that, and try and give it a good surface for this to stick to. It is a bit of an investment. It's about two, $250 worth of products now. By the time you do the rust converter, the primer, and the bully liner, 
um look it's yeah it, it adds up it, it's an old tray it is worth spending money on it's solid so and uh, i just want to do it properly and make sure it sticks One down, one to go, and then onto the tray. Time for the bully liner. I like this process. I rang me painter mate. He said after that primer or the etch primer has gone on, as soon as it tacks off, 10, 15 minutes, he said, you'd be sweet, put it on. Um, he knows what I'm like. I'm very impatient. So get this painted i can then at least put the guards back on put the whole front end back together i've got the battery tray i can put back in we're getting somewhere Time to just start buttoning up a heap of these little jobs that I've been putting off for a while, like uh, put some P-clips on the speedo cable and the rear wiring harness. We've got a bit of a list up on the on the whiteboard, some seat belts, interior light. Uh, what else we got? A rear view mirror, I've ordered one of them to come. So all these little things just to get it ready to drive down the street to get a blue slip because we're getting bloody close. Um, I'm really getting close to getting it back outside and probably giving it a wash. I've still got some dirt underneath it and dirt in the chassis rail that I really should have loosened up by now. I've cleaned a lot around the uh, gearbox area when I was mucking around with that. So it's been an ongoing process. Still trying to get this red dirt out of it. There's so much mud everywhere. And uh, I spent probably two or three days gurning it when I got it. So that's where we're at. We'll get it outside and then we'll probably get back onto the tray. I am going to give the deck of the tray a final coat of the bully liner, but I'm going to use a spray gun. I borrowed off a mate. I wasn't happy with the finish uh, and the spray gun finish should be much nicer. So we'll learn something new today. I've um, never used this sort of spray gun before. I've never used a spray gun actually, to be honest. So something new. Let's get into it. I know, I think I did a good job. They're laughing at me, but it bloody looks amazing. That's a whole tin gone. So that shit is $75 a tin, so it's it is a bit exy, but um, it looks friggin' amazing. You've done an awesome job. The gun itself's like 40 bucks, so yeah, pretty good DIY and quite a satisfying little job to do at home, for sure. Another box ticked, keep pushing on. Righto, I'm getting a little bit excited. Gonna give him a bath. Um, I've actually never really washed it since I owned it, obviously, the state that it's been in. So I'm just going to use a, uh, just a cheap soap and a scouring pad to go over the whole body. So when I get the tray back on, I uh, yeah, want him to look his best. Just about dry glance from the back actually, but I don't know how far everyone else is. Um, I did you a favour, I got you to run the kids around, you can just have a beer instead. Thanks mate. Cheers mate. Well we've called the troops, they're coming around this afternoon to give me a hand to lift the tray back on Lance. Uh, last time we took it off, uh, we proceeded to drink nearly a carton of beer between the four or five of us. So a few mates come around yesterday afternoon, we got that tray lifted off. Uh, and we had a couple of beers while we were there. Bit of a Lance Christmas party, I think. But anyway, that's uh, it's the time of the year for it. Uh, it'll be a five minute job and then a couple of beers afterwards. And that's what it's all about, really. When you're building a car like this, um, it's not about getting everyone around to just work on it flat out, but having a beer and um, having a chat, standing around a cool project. That's that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, well, the stupider things you say, the better, really. So, <laughs> rip in. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, we're not doing too much. Tim, <laughs> go around the other side. Oh, I don't be like that. Oh, do fuck, it's still heavy, eh? No, not at all. It's all that good. What? It's fucking heavy, eh? Lift it up. Oh, it's steel. Your side. You know the headboard, that's why. Fuck me, that's all. Oh, where is it? He's gone in the show. He goes all in paint. Yeah. No, no, no. 
I'm not worried. <laughs> Yeah, 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 <laughs> they may be shed bolts. <laughs> they're 8.8. Oh, yeah. That felt good. Ooh, cool. yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> Tiny. Timmy, push the tray forward. Oh, 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 fingers. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, don't put your finger in the hole. I've chopped the top of mine off doing that. <laughs> you always get in trouble when you put your finger backwards. in the hole. Backwards. <laughs> backwards. Alright, put her in the shed and do a burnout. As suspected, it did turn into a few beers last night. Thanks for your help, guys. Um, but that's what it's all about. You call on your mates to give you a hand when you need a lift. So we've got the tray on. We're going to go through, tighten all the bolts up now. Um, there's eight 10 mil bolts in it, so that's not going anywhere. We'll work on getting the tail lights on, getting somewhere for the number plate to go. One of those tail lights has the number plate light under it. Get the reversal lights wired up, and we're getting bloody close for a blue slip, so let's get into it. Okay, so it's time to fit the tail lights. As usual, it's gonna be pretty painful. <laughs> Everything you do is, um, there's always a, a little challenge in the road. So we've got the cable coming out the back. Um, I could drill a smaller hole and pin these out, which I'm still thinking about doing, but look, I'd rather not, just in case I ever have to change them out one day, if they break or something. Um, I'm gonna take the plunge and we're gonna drill a hole big enough through the steel for the plug to go through. Uh, it is fairly thick steel too, so we'll get, get the hole saw out, get some cut and compound on it, take our time, try and get a hole big enough that uh, this will all pass through it uh, without blunting the hole saw, because then I have to do another one and um, they're pretty expensive. So, start drilling. So I'm just using a five and a half mil bit as a pilot. I'm only doing that because this is the um, only extra long drill bit I have in that size. So use that as a pilot and then come back through from the other side with the step drill bit to make those a bit bigger and give me a little bit of movement in them. And uh, we'll do the same for the hole saw. We'll use this as a pilot and come back through from the backside. Don't forget the treffle X. Awesome. That went exceedingly well. Right, hey, so we've got the tail lights mounted. Next thing is we need standalone reversing lights. When I bought those trailer lights, I was, um, I didn't think about it too much, and they're designed for a boat trailer. I got them from BCF, so I really just like the design of them, and then I thought, ah, they don't have reversing lights because they're trailer lights, they're not car lights. Not to matter, I jumped on all 4x4's website and just sort of was interested to see what they had that would suit. And I come across these steady rock lights. They look amazing, they draw 0.4 of an amp, and they're a quality steady product, which will match the headlights that we've got running. Uh, and I think they just really set off the back of the old U here. Always wanted to run some really modern lights on an old tray. So uh, I'm gonna go about probably putting them down lower and uh, in a standalone position on the back of the tray here. So we'll go about drilling some holes in these pieces, one on each side. Really like the look of that. Nice, let's do it. Very nice. They retail for about $36 each, these little lights, and I know I'm, I'm pretty well raving on about them now, but they've got a rubber mounting behind them. There's little rubber sleeves that go in for the uh, hex head mushroom bolts. They're just a really good quality product, and I can see how they'll last for a bloody long time. Uh, that is the difference between a good quality light, I suppose, and then just grabbing whatever you find off eBay. And uh, for 36 bucks, it's really not too bad. That's what I plan on using for interior lights. At the time I ordered them, they only had two in stock, so I'm gonna get some more. Might even chuck a couple around the headboard, just as a bit of camp lighting. Perfect, and 0.4 of an amp, so we will test them, see how bright they are, but um, yeah, wrapped.
Awesome, put a bit of love into it, nice and neat. Hopefully I'll never have any electrical dramas with tail lights, headlights, blinkers, all that sort of thing. I want that to be rock solid. Um, all nice and neat, P-clipped out of the road so it can't get hung up on things. It's not underneath the chassis anywhere. Look, doing it like this takes a bit of time, but um, in five years time, when everything still works and they haven't ripped a wire out, it's all worth it to take that little bit of extra time for these sort of things. Right, so we're we'll going to get the guards, bolt them on. I did straighten them out in a previous episode, so they're ready to go. starting to look good freaking excited so soon as though this is going to be like a little mini reveal of how Lance is pretty well finished up I've got some brand new Toyota Land Cruiser badges to put on the side so we'll chuck them on but I've also gone and got a brand new Toyota badge for the front which you've probably seen in previous videos but throughout this episode if you have noticed we've got a custom Lance badge on the grill which I've got laser cut out of stainless steel and it's just a nice touch now I am going to feature that little badge across a few other things when we get to the snorkel. You know, there's a bit of a weird design going on there and the exhaust and um, something to do with the uh, timber tray sides. I think we can do something with that badge as well. So it is going to feature throughout the car a bit and just gives it its own personality, which is what this project's been all about. It's more than a car to me, this thing. Um, look, it's starting to sound like a sickness and it really is, but it's something I've, um, yeah, I've become really passionate about and I love this thing. So. We'll chuck them toy out of Land Cruiser badges on and I'll get Megs to put a nice montage together so you can have a look at what is pretty well the finished product, for now anyway. That's it, Lance is warming up the drive in to get the blue slip. We're gonna go and get a Weybridge certificate first. So it's a fair hike. Whew. Hopefully it makes it. Well, it's an exciting day, but a little bit of a sad day at the same time. Lance is registered, so that brings us to the end of our 15-part build series on an old farm truck to fully road legal and registered. And man, it's been a wild ride, and I've learned a lot. And I really appreciate everyone that supported us along the way, including all of our sponsors. Without our sponsors, this would be very hard to achieve. Heaps more little modifications to do and heaps cool little things that um, won't be just relevant to uh, a HJ47 though, that's for sure. So that's why we're going to end the build series now. We'll get in and do a heap of other little modifications that'll be relevant to not just a HJ47. So guys, next time I see you, I might be on the road in this thing. Um, I'm going to be driving it this afternoon. I'm bloody excited just to daily it for now and get in and do some bigger trips in it. 
once we do a few of these other mods like get the 12 volt sorted so we can run a fridge and um you know all those standard things that we have in our four wheel drives as we just love modifying them so much so thanks again for watching guys don't forget you only live once get out in the shed and get into that project because it feels good once you're finished i tell you